I want to talk to you for a few moments on the seven powers of the mind. Your mind is the decision maker. It's the factory for knowledge. It's the storage center. It's the warehouse where you store emotional events, emotional feelings. Most theologians believe that the heart is the subconscious mind, the part that we're not aware of. Six-sevenths, like the tip of the iceberg, is our conscious mind. It's a fascinating thing. The mind is so very powerful. To test the power of the mind, they took a football team into a special room and a doctor told them that after they had been tested that they found they had some bacteria, some they had a disease they did not understand and they were going to test them over a period of time that they had discovered this in their physical exams. In seven days, Two, if I recall, two of the football players could not even get out of bed. Every one of them developed symptoms. One, his legs were hurting very much painful. Another, the back. Uh, Some, uh, all kind of problems evolved after the doctor's report that they had discovered some disease in their body. After two weeks, Every one of them had something wrong, just fiercely, that was aware. They were symptoms. And then the doctor told them that there was really nothing wrong with them. They had just, they were testing the power of suggestion. How that the mind could take a thought and turn it into an experience. The mind does not differentiate between that which is imagined and that which is experienced. You can lay in the bed at night, hear a sound, and suddenly your fists are clenched. How many has ever heard somebody break it? Where's a fork? Where's a knife? If I can get to the kitchen. Where's my gun? The mind is a very powerful thing. The mind is so powerful that companies will pay $2.4 million for 30 seconds during a Super Bowl football game to flash in front of you a picture. The mind is so powerful in its ability to connect information that they can say this and you will feel this. The mind is so powerful that it will connect unrelated knowledge and unrelated information. For instance, you can watch a commercial and 29 seconds of the 30 seconds has nothing to do with the last second of the product. It's almost like selling cigarettes and a guy is on the mountains with a horse and you say, what does that have to do with smoking? But they're connecting smoking with a feeling. That's why they use the scantily clad female body to sell toothpaste. What's the relationship? It connects us with pleasure. The mind assembles colors and colors have voices. Every color has a voice. I could show you a color and it would give you a voice. One might say, wow, wow, wow. Another, ooh. Colors have sounds. Emotional sounds. We react to colors. That's why they paint. They found if they put pink in front of a weightlifter, he loses 20%. I think it's 20% of of his strength because they react to colors. They bring colors into prisons because it affected violence. 
Red is motivating, it's also agitating. There's cheerful colors. That's why God spoke in numbers, and I talked to the men this morning about it, saying, to remember my word, put a blue ribbon on your clothes and on your garments so that every time you see that blue ribbon, you'll think of my word. You'll remember, you'll remember, you'll remember. The mind associates pictures with feelings. I heard a song yesterday. They were playing at some store. If you don't know me by now, then you never, never will know me. And I immediately replayed an experience. President John F. Kennedy's assassination. I was standing in the warehouse at Wine Gardens food store on Ryan Street in Lake Charles. 18 years old when I heard he was assassinated. I was facing the shelves this way. Because the mind remembers that because the emotion and the picture are connected. I remember residents in sitting on the sofa turning on the TV, two o'clock in the morning. Going to speak for Pastor Art Aragon the next morning and at two o'clock in the morning, turned on the TV. And there was Princess Diana killed in a car accident. I remember the motel room in California sitting on the edge of the bed in the chair there when I found out Elvis Presley had died, and for some reason I felt incredible sadness. The mind and the emotions are very, very, very connected. Your mind is deciding what you're feeling. You can't decide a feeling. You decide a focus, and your focus creates the feeling. Your mind collects experiences. The mind has to be renewed, it has to be trained. The mind gathers information, sorts it, distinguishes what matters and what doesn't. The wounded mind. The wounded mind is a horrifying experience. The mind of the terrorist may be different than the mind of a mother. But you're responsible for what you do with your mind. Your mind is not you. It's a part. It's a mechanical thing that God put inside you that requires cleansing, renewing. But your mind is not you. You must see that your heart part, your longing, your passion for God is at war with that mind. The mind does not get saved when you do. When you gave your heart to Christ, your mind starts a renewing process and my experience has been that it continuously has to be renewed every morning every day. He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And my, my goal this morning is to increase your respect for your mind, that you give attention to it, that you protect it, that you realize it can destroy you or you can grow it and get strength through it, that your mind takes an in information and magnifies it and your mind can take a seed and turn it into a harvest. Your mind can take a feeling and turn it into a tragedy. Very little attention is given to the mind in Christian circles. Other belief systems understand the mind and they work with it and labor for it. 
I want to give you some basic scriptures, walk you through, and then steps on if you're battling. Because every battle is a battle of the mind. The battle of life is for the mind. The battle of the mind is for focus. Significant preachers in love with Jesus have lost their minds. People who loved God, enjoyed God, did not know how to protect their mind. Because your mind is a gathering place. It has the power to collect, retrieve, replay, maximize, and magnify. Your mind is so remarkable that all demonic powers are focused on your mind. Satan doesn't grab your hand. He works with your mind. If you can learn to work with your mind, I can change your life, change your world. But it must, you must give it attention. You must see it in scripture, how everything is in this mind. Your mind creates your feelings, your thoughts. Your mind can match things together that don't even belong together. I was sharing this morning, I'll never forget, some years ago, I was in a store with a young lady I was dating at the time, and suddenly she was mad. And she got mad a lot. I just amazed and never knew why, but suddenly her countenance changed. I said, What's wrong? What's happened? I saw you. Saw me do what? Look at I explained to her that I do look, that that's what my eyes do. They don't talk nor think or hear. My eyes look. That's what my eyes function. I look at lights. I look at refrigerators. I look at McDonald's. I look at mountains. I look at rivers. I look at women. I look at men. And a man who tells you he doesn't look is like the woman who tells you she doesn't. Look at someone next to you and say, I hope he doesn't go too far with this today. She had seen a good looking woman in the store. I had not seen her. I literally had not been looking. I was looking at electronics. I had not seen the woman, but most of you women know there's nothing more agitating to women than a beautiful woman. (laughs) Nothing more intimidating, infuriating than a woman who looks better than you. This is a place of honesty, folks. It's a place of honesty. I did not know where the woman was, but I finally, where? And she pointed her out. I didn't think she was that impressive. Everybody's got their style, you know, as well as a season of need. If you're hungry, anything tastes good. Girls do get better looking at clothes in time, as the old song says, and if a guy gets lonely, about anything will do. I wasn't lonely, I wasn't in need, and I didn't see anything startling about her, but it messed up her day. It messed up her day and her life. When I saw the woman, it, and she pointed her out, I hadn't, but in her mind, she linked them. Evidently, I had looked back there. Your mind will make you a hostage. Your mind will sabotage every good time and every good feeling in your life. If your mind does not get renewed in the presence of God continuously... It can make you imagine when your husband's late 15 minutes, who is he with? 
When your wife gets too happy on the phone, why are you too happy? You didn't, I heard, I could tell your voice changed. You were a little high. I know when you speak a little tender, high. None of us are fools. We know when you say things on the phone and your voice changes. Maybe I'm just extra perceptive or maybe just sensitive, but shoot. I know the gleam in the eye. I know the energy sudden that happens around. I know when somebody was just dragging around, the next thing I know they're... (laughs) We're not exactly idiots. But your mind will work you over. Your mind will magnify mistakes, magnify things, Your mind will tell you that people don't care, don't love you, ignored you, didn't speak to you. They're thinking this. I get notes constantly. I could tell you were upset with me. And sometimes I have to say, and what is your name again? (laughs) Now, why was I upset? When was this? I could tell by the way you looked at me. You're mine. I was in California many years ago, and preacher turned around, Chuck Cruz. He said, uh, heard you had a thing for this woman here, my church. Last time I said, really? I said, yeah. She said, you were really making eyes at her. I said, which one is she? And uh, he pointed her out. I didn't remember. She really wasn't something you would remember in a pleasurable way. But somehow, because I look at people when I preach and teach, I look at them, I don't look at their nose, I look at them. But in her mind, I was making headway. Your mind will match you up with people you don't even like. Your mind is something else. And if you don't learn to conquer your mind, and the only way to conquer it is to fill it with the right. It's called the law of displacement. How do we get the darkness to leave this room? We turn on the light. The entry of the light forces the exit of the darkness. If I said, don't think about this stylus, it goes with a computer. Don't think about it. Don't even look at it. Don't even think about it. Don't even look at it. Why are you looking at it, Pastor Tim? See, I said, don't think about it. And you know what? He just stared at it. He, he wasn't even looking at that stylus. See I, said, see, I said, don't look at it. And next thing I know, he's looking at it. I was in a conference one night, and a preacher started talking about lustful thoughts. And he became so descriptive. And I hadn't been thinking them, but when he got through, I replayed every, even the girly magazines I hid between the sofa, uh, the the bed when I was a teenage boy, mama found. I replayed every picture I had ever seen. If I say, don't think this, don't think this, what you gonna think? That's what you gonna think of. So that's why he said, think on these things. And he gives us things to think about. It helped me when I was a teenage boy because I had a lot of uh, thoughts. And because uh, you, just, you just see things and you just, uh, man, as those days, Sears and Roebuck catalog was exciting. It was the Playboy magazine. This is a different... I thought I was at the Wisdom Center, but I mean, this is a different kind of church. Something's happening in two weeks. I, are you this slow or are you catching on? Are you catching on or are you scared I'm going to get over your, your turf? But when I was a teenage boy, J.C. Penney's magazine, Sears Roebuck magazine, because those are the things, we didn't have a TV, so that was the closest thing I could get. I remember the thoughts that I would battle, and someone preached, you can... You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest. 
in your hair. Have you ever heard that before? It's, you, can, you can't stop a thought from coming through, but you can stop it from staying there. And I want to work with you on that, how to handle wrong thoughts. The Bible talks about a doubtful mind. It talks about a ready mind. It talks about a pure mind. It talks about a carnal mind. The Bible's full of thoughts about mind. But I want to give you, we know that Romans, could turn to Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then I want to read you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. And then he tells you how. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Now watch this. By the renewing of your mind. Transform means to have your nature changed to be suitable for a new purpose. To have your nature changed. Transform means have your nature changed to be suitable for a new purpose. The only way you can change your life is through the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. It's the only way you can change your life is through your mind. Your mind literally is the magnifier. It's also the source of motivation. Turn to Genesis chapter Turn to Genesis. The power, we'll talk to you about the mind, the, the imagination of the mind. Chapter 11 in Genesis, chapter 11. We put people on the moon. I think we do. At least they show it videos. I'm just going by what they say. Almost everything I believe, somebody said it that I don't know. I think they put people on the moon. But look at what God said in Genesis 11, 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. They said, Go. Go to, let us build a city in a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us build us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have one language. This they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Underline that scripture, verse 6. Nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Now, theologians say that they had the zodiac sign on the top of the building. They were actually building a, a building in defiance to God as a substitute to God. I don't really understand all of that except that God was upset. He said, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them abroad. And that's where all the languages begin to develop. Because the people had come together to build a defiance to God in substitution to God. This is the scripture that is so fascinating. This is the part, verse 6. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be constrained from them. They can do it. They can do it. If the mind can conceive it, you can achieve it. If the mind can conceive it, your mind is a powerful thing. If you read the story of uncommon achievers, they will show you that the mind has such power even over the body. You have watched some people go through courses and then walk on coals of fire and not be burned. Call it demonic, anything you want to, but they're working with the power of the mind. Just like the mind can produce the symptoms of diseases. I read one report that they said cancer can be traced to unresolved worry. That worry creates in the body a chemical reaction in your body that creates an environment for cancer to grow. The power of the mind. A lady saw a car fall on her little girl and went over and picked up the car off the little girl 
while someone else pulled the little girl out. Later, when the woman was tested for her strength, she couldn't even pick up 200 pounds. But seeing her child under that car, there was a supernatural strength that came on her. She was able to do what she could never do without that scenario. Your mind affects your body. Jeannie Callis tells me from time to time that stress causes your body to hold on to fluids. And it's, you can go without food and try to be losing weight. But if you're under a lot of stress, your body will not cooperate. Your body holds on. Because stress affects the mind. It affects the mind. I hope to encourage you and really motivate you today to really give attention to your mind, what goes in, what stays in, what grows, how to protect it. The mind can collect knowledge. It's astounding how many thousands of pieces of information enter your mind in a split second. You can meet, if you stood up here, you would see many faces and have a thousand feelings about different people that you see. Your mind is like a vacuum cleaner. It's a magnet for knowledge. It has the power to see, to distinguish difference, to discern difference. Think of us, we all have like a nose, most I think, eyes, ears, a mouth, but yet there's difference. The mind has the ability to distinguish difference. I never tire of the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference, right and wrong, evil and righteousness, difference in people, difference in a countenance, difference in a moment, like the blind man crying out to Jesus. The dominant purpose for wisdom, and don't you love the wisdom of God? so thankful you're listening today and watching and being a part of the internet, telling others about it. And I hope you're getting, by the way, I hope you're getting my daily podcast every single day on your iPod or your MP3, every single day, two minutes of wisdom, be a blessing. Sometimes I go a little over because I get excited. I want you to be a part of this ministry. I believe that when you get involved with God, he gets involved with you. I am one of the ministers of the gospel who believe the words of Jesus. I believe every word he said. When he told Peter that there would be a hundredfold return on any investment in the gospel, in Mark 10, 28 through 30, I believed him. When the word of God says in Malachi 3, that if I bring the tithe, which is 10% of my income, and the offering back to him, that he would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I don't have room enough to receive, I believe him. Why would I believe God about heaven and hell and not believe him about the blessing of the Lord? I want to pray over the seeds that you have been planting in this ministry. And by the way, I have an incredible gift you're going to love. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever offered. We're asking the Holy Spirit for 300 partners this week who will set aside a seed of $300 for our outreaches. I need your help. I want you to help me. Not just to feed a thousand children a day, which we do, or a thousand families, or underwrite the wisdom of Asia Bible College, or to underwrite the tent factory in South Africa, or the home of hope, but that we can go into 100 countries with the gospel. I'm holding in my hand the wisdom quick scan Bible. The wisdom quick scan Bible. I have never in my life found a Bible easier to read. As you know, for many years, I've read the Bible through 40 chapters a day, every single month of my life. There is no easier book to read than this quick scan Bible. When I found out that I could offer it to you inside of some of the teaching that I've been doing and I'll do today, I want you to have it. Call me right now, plant your seed of 300 and watch God move. Your mind affects your body. 
Jeannie Callis tells me from time to time that stress causes your body to hold on to fluids. And it's, you can go without food and try to be losing weight. But if you're under a lot of stress, your body will not cooperate. Your body holds on. Because stress affects the mind. It affects the mind. I hope to encourage you and really motivate you today to really give attention to your mind. What goes in, what stays in, what grows, how to protect it. The mind can collect knowledge. It's astounding how many thousands of pieces of information enter your mind in a split second. You can meet, if you stood up here, you would see many faces and have a thousand feelings about different people that you see. Your mind is like a vacuum cleaner. It's a magnet for knowledge. It has the power to see, to distinguish difference, to discern difference. Think of us, we all have like a nose, most I think, eyes, ears, a mouth, but yet there's difference. The mind has the ability to distinguish difference. The difference in nationality, the difference between blonde and brunette, the difference between fat and skinny, the difference between tall and small. Your mind has an incredible ability to see and gather information and to see the difference. Your mind has the ability to capture sound and associate it as a soothing sound, an agitating sound. The power of the mind. They did a test many years ago when I was a teenage boy. They flash on a theater screen one thousandth of a second. One thousandth of a second. In other words, you didn't know what was shown. But they broke it down and they flashed on there for people to go get Coca-Cola and to go get popcorn. Nobody saw it because of a thousandth of a second. Your conscious mind, where you work from, what you can retrieve and what you can remember, that top one-seventh of the mind, that conscious mind did not see it. It was too fast. One thousandth of a second, you're not going to see it. But people strangely got up when it was flashed. In fact, they had to make a law against it called sublimal, sublimal advertising because they found that they could control the behavior of people through some liminal advertising, just a flash, just a suggestion. One thousandth of a second. Now, personally, I believe that the mind will play a big role in the Antichrist takeover of the earth. I believe that it will be through the television screen. I do, I do believe that the TV will be a major persuader because they could show you things right now and you do not even know what they're showing you. They will plant the seeds for desires that you never thought you'd have. Everything matters in advertisement, everything. Everything matters. They were shocked to see people get up for no reason at all in the middle of the movie and go get Cokes and go get pop popcorn. The power of the mind is so strong that athletes that learn to work with the mind become supernatural achievers, huge. They become powerful. I remember working out with the trainer and he said, think on the muscle that you're working out with. Caleb, I'm sure you've gone through that training. And I said, what difference does it matter? I can think of something I need to do. I think of a TV tape I need to make. He said, no, think on the muscle that you're working with. I said, how could there be any relationship between my thoughts and the muscle I'm working with as long as I'm doing it? But in athletics, they know the power of the mind. It's the difference between the team that wins and loses. The comeback team that can be 20 points behind in the last five minutes through the power of the mind. 
Every coach knows the power of the mind. And between innings in a baseball game, between quarters in a football game or a basketball game, that coach is in there working with their mind. The mind decides what it believes. Repetition is a persuader of the mind. The mind, they say when you think a thought, we call it a little gray matter, which is intangible matter. If you could see your brain, if you could hold your brain, every time you think a specific thought, there is a line, there is a groove made on your, on, on, your, on your actual gray matter. There is a line. It's so tiny that you cannot see it with the natural eye. If you, if you think that same thought, it goes again in the same way. There is a literally, there is a physical indention in your brain matter. So tiny, so small, But there, if you keep thinking that thought, it becomes a groove and it automatically begins to guide your behavior. It literally begins to birth instincts. So that if you keep thinking this same thought, it becomes habitual to go back to that thought and it collects strength over and over and over power of your mind, this is why he said, take my word, write it on the doorpost. When you sit down to eat, talk about my word. When you walk with your children down the road, talk to them about my word. Keep saying my word so much over and over till what you keep hearing, you eventually believe. What you keep hearing, you begin to understand. What you keep hearing, you begin to live. A single statement can forever change your personality through your mind. Paula White, who we're looking forward to having her in the months ahead, and also a great school of the Bible in June, I think it's June 9th or something like that, a whole weekend of nothing but the word of God through Marilyn Hickey. And it's gonna be out of this world. You, don't want, you wanna make plans right now because she's gonna walk you through the entire word of God. And the only way, the, to me, the key to survival on the earth is his word stored inside me until I become instinctive with how I react to everything in my life with his word. Paula White overheard her mother or dad, someone in her life, make a statement that she was ugly. And it took her years to recover from the statement. Her mind took that statement, added alienation. Nobody wants me. I'm a misfit. You can hear one statement in your childhood that keeps you hostage for 40 years until there's a renewing of your mind. Your subconscious mind stores information that you cannot recall with your your conscious mind. That's why you have reactions you don't understand. There is a book called The Other Side of Me written by Sidney Sheldon, my favorite novelist. He died recently, a few days ago at 89 years old. He has sold over 250 million of his novels. He's the most translated novelist in the entire world. But he had a problem 
and he tells about it in the other side of me. When he found out he had a chemical imbalance, something was wrong inside of him. He recalls just saying things, just speaking something out and then saying, why did I say that? He finally went to a doctor because he began to lose friends and people. And they explained to him that there was a chemical loss in his body and said, you will say things you didn't mean to say, didn't know you were going to say, and it can destroy you. It's a fascinating book, The Other Side of Me. And he shares step by step how he began to take steps to conquer that. Today, you may have parts of you that you do not understand. Today, you may have reactions and instincts that you say, why do I feel that way? I have good news for you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a seed that can be planted in the memory bank and be developed and grow. And it can thrust out every weed Satan has put inside your garden. And whatever has come and entered inside you that's brought discouragement with yourself, where you become demoralized, some of us have no confidence in ourselves. Some of us do not feel good looking enough. We don't feel smart enough. Some of us feel put down. Some of us feel like our whole goal is just to survive. And there's people in this room that if you could die and commit suicide without going to hell, you would have already committed suicide. Jesus, touched with the feelings of our infirmities, knows that. He said, I've given you a mind. Let this mind be in you that was in me. Anything that you can imagine, you can do. Now, there's, there's much to this. i got to bring this thing to a close. Let me just throw some things quickly at you. Your mind can remember, it can magnify, it can imagine, it can be renewed. Let's talk particular about your mind can retrieve recall information at will your mind can associate knowledge your mind can magnify knowledge and make it bigger than what it really is your mind can focus which means the elimination of anything else that doesn't matter focus is the key to to minimizing what doesn't belong in your life. You choose a focus and everything else neutralizes. Focus is the empowering, is the divine empowering to neutralize what God doesn't want you to notice. This one thing I do. If I'm looking completely at Brother Abraham, I'm looking at him, I'm not seeing someone over here. If I'm looking at my father while he is, it's a good book, huh, Danny? He's just reading my book, The Uncommon Leader. If I'm focused on my father, I may not notice my sister. Focus is literally your key to stripping everything of its power. This one thing I do, my heart is fixed. Forgetting those things behind, pressing toward the mark. How do I forget by pressing toward the mark? I don't forget yesterday by meditating on yesterday. I forget yesterday by focusing on tomorrow. How do I get over my weaknesses? By thinking about my strengths. Marilyn Hickey leaned over one day to me in a service some time ago when I was preaching for her and her husband Wally in Denver, Colorado, a church called the Happy Church. She said, let me tell you an experience. She said, I just came back from China. I ask the master mentors, the ping pong masters, how do you handle the weaknesses of your protégés? They says, we ignore them. She said, what do you mean? They said, we find the dominant strength and we raise that strength to its highest level of ability. For instance, if someone has, I love ping pong, hadn't played in a while, but said if somebody has a 
backhand, and that's their strength. She said, I, that's all I have them do over and over and over and over and over and over until they're so good at that backhand that their weaknesses don't matter anymore. If someone is good on a serve, I have them serve for hours and hours until their serve is so powerful, their weakness doesn't hurt them. Some of us are so preoccupied with our weakness that our strengths are whimpering in the corner, unused, unnoticed, undeveloped. And I can magnify anything with my mind. I can look at someone's bad until that's all I see. That's all you see about yourself. That's all you see about life. DeWitt Jones, is that the name? Is a photographer for National Geographic. I purchased some of his DVDs. In fact, I'd like to show them maybe at Man Talk coming up, or maybe it'd be, they're, they're phenomenal. They're absolutely phenomenal. They, they're very costly, about 800 bucks for about 20 minutes. But I purchased several. And he shows the power of the mind to find that he's, he has to take, I think it's 40,000 pictures to get 30 good, is, it, is that right, Pastor? 40, when they take it, when they send him to search for, for pictures for a story, he'll take 40,000 pictures to get 30 he really wants to keep. 40,000, and this is what he emphasizes. Embrace the best and let go of the rest and magnify the good part. That doesn't come easy to some of us. Some of us it does. But you're going to have to do that about God and you're going to have to do it about yourself. There's more to the gospel than take up the cross. He said, if you suffer, you'll reign with me. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured. Your mind focus decides what you're able to endure, what you're able to rise up over, what you're able to conquer. All the battles of life are inside your mind. They're in your mind. They're inside your mind. And there must be a recognition of that. There must be an embracing of that. If I can conquer what's inside thy head, I can conquer anything. A great preacher we all know told me one time that in the shower, he yells and screams in the shower, I can do all things through Christ. Greater is he that's within me. He does that before he gets out to the platform. Now everybody that hears him thinks, Lord, he just walks in victory but he starts working on his mind with his mouth. Who's going to work on your mind if you don't? Nobody in a work way. You're going to have to work on your mind with your mouth. Three keys to working on your mind. Pictures, words. Pictures, words, and the word. Pictures, words, and the word. A picture creates a feeling. C.M. Ward, the famed Revival Times speaker on the radio broadcast for the Assemblies of God, when I was 23, 22, 24 years old, spoke to us, and he said he has two pictures that he uses before he goes into services. Famed pastor, evangelist, Great preacher, brilliant preacher from Canada, but he was the official radio voice of the Assemblies of God. He said he had an old picture, an old picture of a man that was heathen. And when he looked into the man's eyes, he saw lost. 
He said, when I look at that old man's picture, I must tell him the gospel. He hasn't heard about Jesus. He said, that picture motivated me. That picture, that picture motivated me. And he said, sometimes when I was too tired to preach, I'd travel for thousands of miles. I'd pull out that picture and something would come over me. I'm called. I'm a deliverer. I'm a soul winner. I'm his link to Calvary. I'm the voice of God in his life. And he said, I'd look at those pictures. The pictures on your wall are controlling your mind. The pictures on your wall are telling you what to think. What pictures are on the wall of your mind? What pictures on the wall of your house? What have you put around you? There's a gorgeous picture. It's a picture of a sunset, but they want to know if I wanted to buy it as a mural. I said, not really. If I could call it a sunrise, I'd put it up. But sunsets mean it's over. It's finished. And I want to live 13 more days. I don't know that I want that picture. I don't want anything in front of me that creates the wrong feeling. Pictures. Go through magazines. Tear out pictures that excite you because they create feelings. And give your mind food. Give your mind food. Give your mind food. If your mind is not getting proper food, it will look for wrong food. I believe if Adam and Eve would have eaten the acceptable fruit, there would have been no hunger for the forbidden fruit. You must fill up your mind. You must actively get involved with feeding your mind. Pictures, pictures, pictures. You ever went through your old pictures and saw a picture when you was 40 pounds lighter and got inspired? I remember pictures. I was watching the Olympics one day. Got so excited. I love the muscles, you know, those back leg muscles. I have no idea why, but that, whoo, that... The runners, I got so excited, I went and joined three health spas that day, three. <laughs> Bought me two jogging outfits, two new pair of tennis shoes. Why? Pictures decide your conduct, your behavior. Choose the pictures that motivate you. Fill up your mind with those pictures. Abraham, see the stars? That's what your kid's gonna be like. See the sand on the seashore? What your kid's gonna be like. Really? Yeah. Words. Second is words. The words you say and the words you listen to. Words create feelings. You might add to that sounds. Sounds. I was picking out a fountain. Or another, I love water fountains. I just love the sound of water. I have no idea why. But I love the sound of water. And I was picking out a water fountain last night from my library. Sounds. And I told the lady, I said, disconnect all the others. Because, you know, you go into a store and you hear all the sounds of all of them. So you buy this one thinking that's what you're going to hear when you get home. You get home, <laughs> 40 of them are not on, just the one. And I said, disconnect all the other sounds. I just want to hear how this one sounds. Because there, there's different sounds of water fountain. You know, thump, 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 trickle. I mean, there's a, everything has a different sound. And I wanted the sound that didn't get my attention. I wanted to fill up the environment, but not grab my mind and jerk it. I want to hear sounds. What are the sounds you love? Surround yourself with them. What are the words you love to hear? A lady put a word in a child's book that's just been released the libraries are canceling the book because I won't tell you the word because that's what, the, what you'll remember the whole service today. But she said, I just like the sound of the word. And they often do this in children's book to sneak words into the vocabulary of our children. As you know, the battle is for the mind of our youth. We know from satanic planning that he thinks at least 80 years in advance. We know that before Moses ever became a deliverer, Satan saw him in his mother's arms and tried to schedule his downfall. How many understand that? So Satan is thinking ahead and he's working for the minds of our children. So we're gonna fight for the minds of our children. 
we're going to battle for the minds of our children. What are the words that you love to hear? There is a name. Can you come help me on the? There is a name. I love to hear say that. There is a name. I love to hear. Love. again from the beginning of that his mind is kept in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him sing that again one more time oh, say Jesus. Jesus say his name again Jesus. 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 demons know his name demons react to his name how much more should you and I Take your Bible, hold it over your heart. I want to, we had sung this song in a while. Would you sing it to us? Stand with me, would you hold in your Bible? I never tire of the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Right and wrong, evil and righteousness, difference in people, difference in a countenance, difference in a moment, like the blind man crying out to Jesus. The dominant purpose for wisdom, and don't you love the wisdom of God? I'm so thankful you're listening today and watching and being a part of the internet, telling others about it. And I hope you're getting, by the way, I hope you're getting my daily podcast every single day on your iPod or your MP3, every single day, two minutes of wisdom. Be a blessing. Sometimes I go a little over because I get excited. I want you to be a part of this ministry. I believe that when you get involved with God, he gets involved with you. I am one of the ministers of the gospel who believe the words of Jesus. I believe every word he said. When he told Peter that there would be a hundredfold return on any investment in the gospel, in Mark 10, 28 through 30, I believed him. When the word of God says in Malachi 3, that if I bring the tithe, which is 10% of my income, and the offering back to him, that he would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I don't have room enough to receive, I believe him. Why would I believe God about heaven and hell and not believe him about the blessing of the Lord? I want to pray over the seeds that you have been planting in this ministry. And by the way, I have an incredible gift you're going to love. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever offered. We're asking the Holy Spirit for 300 partners this week who will set aside a seed of $300 for our outreaches. I need your help. I want you to help me. Not just to feed a thousand children a day, which we do, or a thousand families, or underwrite the wisdom of Asia Bible College, or to underwrite the tent factory in South Africa, or the home of hope, but that we can go into 100 countries with the gospel. I'm holding in my hand the wisdom quick scan Bible. The wisdom quick scan Bible. I have never in my life found a Bible easier to read. As you know, for many years, I've read the Bible through 40 chapters a day, every single month of my life. There is no easier book to read than this quick scan Bible. When I found out that I could offer it to you inside of some of the teaching that I've been doing and I'll do today, I want you to have it. Call me right now, plant your seed of 300 and watch God move.